Social justice, one, two, three. I want to be PC. It's just the way to be for me and you. Your hateful slurs are through. I call wee wee on you. We'll fight until you're PC black and blue. Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes. And we've seen it, right? We all see what's happening. It's it's already happened at Marvel. They they pulled back on it. Now they're going back with it again. It's certainly in Marvel uh, Studios with the MCU. It's happening with DC Comics. Woke culture kind of taking over as the main through point of their comic book stories. Their comic book line is pu- pushing woke culture ahead of heroic stories, storytelling. Certainly I've covered this on the channel. And, I'm, and here I'm going to kind of tie everything together and talk about, uh, you know, the examples of, of how we've seen it in the past, what we see happening right now with, with both Marvel and DC, and why it's all destined to fail. It's not destined to fail because uh, because you, you just can't write these stories. It's destined to fail because he, people hate woke culture. Almost everybody hates woke culture. When you break it into subgroups, a vast majority of everybody despises this stuff. Whether it's uh, you know pushing these far left progressive agendas, whether it's all this race swapping, gender swapping, sexuality swapping, all the stuff that's happening all over entertainment and definitely within comic books, and there are numbers to back this up. I'll get to that at the end. But first, we gotta we gotta do a little bit of history, talk about what's happening, not only just in the recent past, but what's happening right now at DC and Marvel, and then we'll get into why this is all destined to fail because absolutely nobody likes woke culture. It's despised almost universally. There's one group, there's one group that that appreciates woke culture. And we'll, we'll get into why, that's, why that group is so irrelevant, it's not even funny. But we've already seen woke culture take over Marvel, right? Marvel Comics, all new, all different, Marvel Legacy. We had tastes like bigotry and, bigotry and mustard in the X-Men. We had Captain America, the symbol of freedom and everything that, that uh, America represents, going hydrocap, going full Nazi. We had Peter Parker, the most relatable character, certainly in the Marvel Universe, par- perhaps the most relatable character in all of comic books. You know, sitting on his girlfriend's couch wearing her Ask Me About My Feminist Agenda t-shirt, basically being completely emasculated. Almost every major Marvel character was race and or gender swapped we've had large scale um you know uh, obviously sexuality uh, swappings as well all these things happen they were all summarily rejected we even had the marketing uh guy from marvel himself accidentally reveal the truth david gabriel is like yeah people people do not read these copies you know people are are rejecting them and our sales are going down he had he was forced to come back and retract that statement the <laughs> the next day, I believe, in social media. But he accidentally let the cat out of the bag, which is nothing that, it was, it was something everybody already knew. And then you would think, well, with that history, with Marvel's, you know, uh, legacy of failure and all new, all different, and all these uh, woke culture kind of changes, and yes, gender swaps, race swaps, uh, sexuality swaps are all associated with woke culture now. That's that's all part of the bag. It's not just you know pushing all these uh, these radical agendas, these pr- progressive ideologies down your throats ad nauseum with a sledgehammer. It's all these other changes that that are all included in it too. And you would think with all that with all that information and the fact that it was summarily rejected by the longtime customers that they would have learned their ne- lesson. But no, Marvel Studios are in essence inviting all this failure into the MCU with Phase 4. We see Jane Thor, Riri Williams, Falcon Cat, Kate uh, Bishop Hawkeye, Kamala Khan, just to name a few, all being invited in and becoming you know main focal characters. At least that's the way it's being portrayed by Kevin Feige and the rest of the executives. And, and Feige himself, this is what he had to say when he was talking about the Eternals and why the Eternals were moved to the top of the line and why they wanted to uh, to promote this, this brand. This is what Kevin Feige the chief creative officer, not only of uh, all Marvel Studios, but the, the guy that's the chief creative officer, as as we're being been told of Marvel Comics. This is what he said, quote, Well, the notion of swip- switching up genders, sexualities, and ethnicities of the characters from the comics was baked in initially when the idea of Eternals movie came out, is what he's saying. 
That was part of what Nate Moore was really advocating for in moving Eternals to the top of the list for us to start working on. So the fact that it was incorporating gender, sexuality, ethnicity swaps of the characters moved Eternals to the top of the list because these are all priorities for Kevin Feige, Marvel Studios, and in essence, Marvel Comics. That's from the words of Kevin Feige himself. He is the chief creative officer of Marvel Comics. And that's why we're starting to see these things creeping. Well, are they creeping back in? Not so subtly coming back into the Marvel Comics universe. At DC Comics, outer established creators who stayed true to the characters, Jeff Johns, Peter J. Tomasi. When's the last time Dan Jerkins wrote anything significant? All I, all that you see, you know, Robert Venditti working on is Superman 78 that I know of. Otherwise, these guys can't, can't even get a, a writing gig. It's quite apparent that Jeff Johns is likely moved on well he'll come back he's done a, he's going to do that batman three jokers sequel because i imagine they're going to give him a lot of money to do it because it was so successful but for the most part the good creators that really celebrated the characters in the history of dc comics are moving on and they're replacing them with a host of activist writers not comic writers activist writers led by uh essentially tom taylor who's got john kitt superman he's got nightwing he's got a batman book you know, he's, he's got a, a host of other things. And then John Ridley himself, who has introduced a new Batman. And these guys are the, the fake focal point of DC Comics moving forward. Sure, you have uh, Josh Williamson moving on Batman. I guarantee you that's going to be temporary before they get somebody more suitable to their new sensibilities over at DC Comics. Now that we've got Dave Cherry, the third known activist himself in the, in the role of general manager. Within... Most of this has happened within the last 12 months. Just just look at these wholesale changes. We've now got a black Batman, a bisexual Robin. The only Lanterns that we know of that actually have powers anymore are Jojo Mullins, Teen Lantern, and maybe Jessica Cruz. None of the male Lanterns anymore. Earth Zero Alan Scott is gay. Harley Quinn has actually saved Batman more times in the last year than he has saved Gotham in his entire life. Absolute insanity. John Kent and Nightwing are now fighting for the pro progressive platform. Not just part of it, all of it. That is exactly, they're no longer wanting to save people. They don't want to save save uh, innocent people anymore. They're going to fight systems and they're going to fix uh, all the things that are on the progressive platform that you can, uh, you can go to Tom Taylor's Twitter feed and find out that he's actually interested in, which is certainly, uh, he's more interested in than telling good comic book stories. We've also learned that Superman won't save black people and he was raped in a prison camp. Apparently that was to make the character more relatable. Couldn't you, doesn't, doesn't the fact that knowing Clark Kent was raped in a prison camp make him more relatable to you? I know I can relate to him better now, now that he's been sodomized. That was, uh, that one was pretty weird. Wonder Woman is now, canically speaking, the first DC superhero. That was done by Scott Snyder, as I believe at the behest of Dan Didio himself before he was shown the door. Of course, that undoes everything that Jeff Johns did in almost a perfectly executed doomsday clock where he established that no matter when it happens, the moment that Superman arrives on Earth is the moment the DC Universe starts, whether it happens in the 1940s, the 1930s, the 1980s, whenever it happens. That's the moment the DC Universe starts. That is no longer the case. Now it's Wonder Woman, I believe, arriving to, um, was it to save Roosevelt? I can't remember. It was something like that. It was something stupid. People forget about it, but she's canically speaking the start of the DC uh, universe now. But hey, there's those dope, those variant covers are dope, right? Those, those, those variant covers are so cool. And all those first appearances to keep you busy instead of realizing what all the trash that you're reading uh, is, is actually turned out to be very effective. And you say, Wes, why are you so against changing the characters? You know, you, you can change some of these things now and then. You know, it'll help the characters. Uh, I've heard a lot of words like it makes them relevant now. What what did they say about Tim Drake when they did the the uh, the retcon that he's bisexual? It made him interesting now. All these characters were relevant beforehand. They were already interesting. The fact that there's a writer out there that could look at a character like Tim Drake and say, well, 
he's not really interesting yet. Let's let's we gotta we gotta change up the representation on the character. Or you look at at a uh, at a Nightwing or a John Kent and say, you know, they're just not really relevant. You know, Nightwing's you know Nightwing's Batman. John Kent's just Superman, right? As if they had no uh, personalities of their own. You could you could separate the characters without making them go full on uh, Tom Taylor mouthpieces, but apparently they're relevant now. Although. Once I get into these numbers, you'll find out that they're all irrelevant now because people hate this stuff. And any of these changes, unto themselves, well, whatever. You know, changes happen. Sometimes you, you, you update the character and see if it hits. But it's all happening essentially in 12 months. DC Comics heroes are no longer saving people. They're push, pushing the creator's political agendas in a lot of cases. It's weird. It's a lot of change. If these things were happening, you know, with a little bit of, of separation between them, whatever, changes happen. We'll see if, if people can um, can accept them. But it's clearly a part of an agenda that starts from the top. Tom Taylor doesn't get to write these things because he wants to. He gets to write these things maybe because he wants to, but because they're okayed by the leadership. And a lot of times, I wouldn't be surprised if he was directed to make these changes. So, now getting into the numbers. The, the numbers are terrible. This is from an, an article from The Atlantic a couple years ago. And The Atlantic, as far as I know, is not known to be a conservative uh, publication. This isn't exactly, uh, what is it? Uh, this isn't Fox News. What's the other one? OAN. This isn't numbers coming out of OAN. This is, this is from an article in, in The Atlantic. And basically, there's, there's three groups. There's the progressive activists, which I believe are 8%. And I think it's 25% of Americans are staunchly conservative. And then you've got two-thirds of all Americans, uh, that what they consider to be the exhausted majority. And most members of the exhausted majority dislike. It, it's not, this isn't barely a majority. Overwhelmingly dislike, hate, political correctness, wokeness being fed to them in their media, their, in their entertainment. And we could, we've seen the backlash. You saw what happened to Ghostbusters. We saw what happened to Charlie's Angels. If there was ever a, a female empowerment you know, story that, that's been baked in you know, since the 70s, 80s, and they still mess that up because that's the message that they're sending out there. And then they, they complain, well, why didn't anyone want to see our story? Well, you, you might not have marketed it very well because absolutely everybody, a vast majority of people absolutely despise all this stuff. A full 80% of Americans believe Political correctness is a problem in our country. They recognize that political correctness, woke culture, is a fundamental problem to America. When you start getting into the younger demographics, and I believe this is probably in Marvel and DC's minds, this is what they're targeting, right? We're, we're going after the young people. We've got the old people, and they're about to die anyway. I mean, you know, I'm 40. You know, I'm, I'm going to kick the bucket next week, apparently. I don't, I don't, I don't have thirty or forty more years of good reading in me. It's time to throw me out with the with the bathwater and usher in these these younger readers. But the numbers aren't even; they're barely better. They're somewhat better. So from the ages of twenty four to twenty nine, seventy four percent, still an overwhelming majority, think political correctness is an issue. Woke culture is a problem. Now we go younger. The Zoomers, right? We had Children of the Atom from. We had Ayala that was targeting the Zoomers. This is what Zoomers would be if they were X-Men nowadays. They would be a trans allegory where all the female characters were in love with each other and, uh, you know, were making out. <laughs> that, that whole series is just bad. But guess what? From, from everything that we're seeing, this, uh, the, the generation under millennials, the Zoomers, are like the most conservative generation in like, 60, 80 years, something like that. It's absolutely insane. Guess what? 79% of them, of the of customers underneath the age of 24, hate, hate political correctness, hate woke culture. Overwhelming majority. More people under the age of 24 hate this stuff than millennials. So those, those new readers, those younger readers that they're supposedly targeting with I Am Not Starfire and Gotham High and all this stuff, they hate this stuff more than most people. Shocking when you look at the actual numbers. Of course, DC Comics and Marvel would never actually pay attention to this. And it's not just them. It's everything. It's all, it's all the, 
the major studios and entertainment and everything. They're just shoving all this shit down your throat. And it feels feels terrible, right? You can only eat so many shit sandwiches before you're like, you know what? Yeah, this is absolutely a shit sandwich. You know, I can't take another bite of it. And there you go, well, it's, it's just white people, right? It's like 100% of white people hate political correctness. But, you know, we're, we're targeting the minority audience. Not correct. Actually, white people come in a skosh under the national average. It's 79% of white folks in America despise woke culture. But when you get to some of the uh, minority groups, it's much higher. We get to Asians, 82%. Hispanics. Uh, the, the the largest growing community in America, right? Latinos, 87% absolutely despise this stuff. American Indians, 88%. Now, that does leave one group that's actually under white people, and that is that is the black community. Well, they, they, they must be 50-50, right? Nah, 75% of black folks in America oppose political correctness and woke culture. The numbers are right there. These These studies have been done. That's why all this shit is going to be rejected because everybody hates it. you could do one or two of these changes, but doing them all at the same time, everyone recognizes this for woke crap. They recognize it for what it is, political correctness being shoved down our throats and we're going to vomit it all right back up because that's how people react to the stuff that they don't like. Now, I did say there's one group, there's one group <laughs> that actually are in favor of political correctness, woke culture, and they are considered... They, in this uh, survey, they're considered progressive activists. 30% of progressive activists see political correctness and woke culture as a problem. Guess how much of, of America's people represent progressive activists? 8%. So you're targeting 70% of 8% of all Americans with this bull crap, and you wonder why it fails. Sure, the first couple of movies from the MCU will still be all right because people won't want to believe it. But once you shove it down their throat enough, they're going to realize this is the shit that I've been trying to avoid. Like the plague, whether it be in media and entertainment, and now I need to avoid this. It happened with Marvel Comics. It's absolutely going to happen with DC Comics because woke culture is despised. People hate it. And it's getting worse and worse and worse as, as the... Uh, as the progressive activist, that little tiny 8% just gets louder and louder and louder and louder because you continuously give these uh, whiny babies their way. And people continue, they hate it and they hate it and they hate it, hate it and even more. Marvel's gone down this road. It failed. DC Comics is going down this road now. It's going to fail. Marvel Studios is going down this road. It's going to fail. It's all going to blow up in their, state, their faces like a stick of Acme Dynamite. And it's all completely predictable just based on the way people feel about what they're putting in their comic books and what they're putting in their entertainment. There you go. Woke culture is not the future of anything. It's the future of how to, how to, how to get your Marvel Studios uh, you know, line to be completely worthless. It's the future to irrelevance. So that's what it is. If you want to be irrelevant, embrace woke culture, shove that down your customer's throats, and they will summarily reject you and move on to something else that actually satisfies their needs because the customer is king and the dollar, the almighty dollar in the end is the bottom line and customers will speak eventually with their wallets. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. I would appreciate it very much. It helps us attract more views for the channel. Subscribe for future commentary, comic book news and reviews, and don't forget to ring the bell for notifications. If you want to talk comics, movies, and much, much more, you can follow me on Twitter at Wes underscore from underscore TC. With that, Salamat Po, and I'm out.